Hey, it's where I sleep. It's nice and cozy. The acoustics are nice. They have an outlet and a fan. So, can't complain. Yo, what's good? It's your boy, Spiron. I told you I was back, and now I'm back. Some of you have seen my house tour parody video thing. Some of you have been asking, like, yo, why do you live in a box, bro? Because LA is freaking expensive, my guy. It's like 2400 for a studio in Koreatown. US dollars, by the way. I'm paying everything in Canadian dollars, because I'm still Canadian! First, first, Team Canada, Canada. Yeah. yeah! Hockey! I love my maple syrup and winter. And slate. <laughs> Imagine paying 30% more for everything on top of tax, which you've yet to pay. That's my life right now. I love I love it. Why do you live in a box? Even when I showed my, my family the place, they were like, okay, cool. Bruh. They see people are hard to impress. And then they see where I sleep and they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, it's not that bad, bro. You have a fan, you have an outlet, it's a twin size bed, you got a nice curtain, what more do you want? Honestly, I'm super grateful to have found this place because when I booked my flights to LA, I had no plan in terms of where I was gonna be staying. So I went on this app called Couchsurfing and then I was like, yo, what up? And then one dude, his name was Saab, he was like, yo, I can't keep you at my place for like that long. But there's this place you should check out called Eddie. So I did. There's like a vetting process. You have to be like an ambitious creative to, to live here. Apparently I fit that, that role. So it took a little, a little bit to get approved. My first night in LA, I stayed at a Airbnb, like hostel bunk bed situation. You see the pictures here. This was the ghetto. Like this is as ghetto as it gets. It was $30 a night. That's more than what I'm paying right now. And it's just like, yo, I guess this is what it takes to live in LA. And then the second day I finally got a tour at this Eddie place. I freaking loved it, bro. They got pots, pans, salt, pepper, laundry, Wi-Fi, furniture, a gym, office. Like, what more do you want, man? But still, they had to like go through my Canadian background check and stuff, so. The second night in LA, I stayed at the Roxy Hotel. This is the most tacky hotel. It's not even a hotel, it's a motel. Like, they got some nice 1969 bed sheets and a single outlet. A single dual outlet, one of which was taken up by uh, the fridge. So that was my second night in LA, getting nicely introduced to the hard knock life. But then I got in, I got into Eddie, bro, it was sick. I was so grateful. I'm still super grateful. Alhamdulillah. It took me seeing like the worst of it to really appreciate where I live now. LA is rough, yo. And living with like ambitious, creative people, that is the best way to getting to experience LA. Being around like-minded people, like having friends from the get-go. Cause it can be a very lonely place, man. Like, my whole trajectory in LA, e even though I've only been here four and a half months, has, has been drastically different. Like each month over towards the next. When I first got here, I would go out to like networking events. I was introduced to mansion parties and like all this extravagant life that did not exist in Toronto. It was super cool. Uh, and then over time, you know, living in Hollywood, I didn't get a chance to be around many like-minded Muslims and like like people that like keep you grounded and, 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 and stop you from chasing materialistic things and stuff like that. So I started to feel very lonely, even though I was surrounded by people all the time. I was really missing like being around my own people, you know, people that like shared the same beliefs as me. It's not everyone wants to go chill out at the bar or a club. Like, I'm not about that. And so I started hitting up random Muslims that lived in LA. Some guy, Kurum, actually responded to me. He's like, sure, come out to this Friendsgiving thing. And I went to this Friendsgiving, which had like over 200 Muslims. The Muslims in SoCal are like this tight-knit community, like everyone knows each other. So if you have a bad rep, then you're screwed. I don't think I've, I've gotten to that point yet. Hopefully. That's when my trajectory really changed. Did a lot of dope things. I got to meet all these great people. Went to these super cool events like Vid Summit, like the Streamies. Fun story about the Streamies. Uh, I met Jay Shetty for the first time. I had to ask him, I'm like, yo, you had an insane trajectory on social media. Did you have like a team around you that like helped build you up, scale you, and, and, and all that? And he's like, no, nope, I built everything on my own. And, and people think that you need a team that can like skyrocket you, but honestly, that's all on you. You pushing out the content and, and just being genuine and expressing your truth, that's what will get you there. And then once you're at that point where you need like help from business development and, and whatnot, but like before all that is even needed, you gotta put the work up front, right? You don't need anything from anyone. When I first moved here, my roommate Ryan told me this in the very beginning. That advice really resonates with me today. You really don't need anything from anyone. Work on yourself, forget the external, focus internally, 
and just do the best that you can do. Like you don't need a helping hand. You can do anything you want on your own. You don't need to rely externally on people. Another cool thing I learned is like just being around genuine people. I have this friend Callan, super talented actor from Australia. Like one of the most important lessons he taught me was just be genuine. Like whenever I would go to him for like advice on how to network or talk to people or approach people because I was new here, his first response would always just be be genuine, be you, be yourself. And I never really had a good grasp of what that meant. I, I didn't have a tight hinge on who I was at that point. And over time, like that again, really resonated with me. It's like, just be genuine, be you. And then you, you'll have nothing to apologize for or worry about because you speak your truth. You are, you're, you're being, you're comfortable in your own skin. You're being yourself. And if people don't like it, then that's on them. It's better than putting on a facade that that's not real and people can see right through that. So I've learned a lot of great lessons in LA. I'm, I'm trying to like truncate it down into this one video that is probably not even relevant to the title at this point, but thank you for sticking with me. It's definitely one of the most formative experiences in my life, coming out to a new city where you just don't know anyone, and it teaches you a lot about yourself, your shortcomings, and and, and, and forces you to grow, which is dope. Like, I, I highly recommend not necessarily coming out to LA, but like leaving your comfort zone. Like, I'm, I'm so grateful for being able to sit in front of a camera and talk again. For the longest time, I didn't have the confidence to do that. You gotta exercise this, you gotta take cold showers, you go wake up early, and then trying to make the most of your life. If you have that opportunity, then definitely go for it. All right, that makes two soapy videos in one month. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this TED Talk. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions on what kind of videos you wanna see from me next. And I will catch you on the next one. Take it easy, and peace.